In the last video we showed you how you could get pure rendering going uh, so that you can make your UI look the way you want and even visually regression test it in dev cards. Now I'm sure you're curious about actually making this thing do something interesting. Um, and so I'm for the interest of, of maybe saving these files off so that you can play with them, uh, let's create a new closure script namespace uh, for mutations part one. And in order to get this new set of cards in, we'll have to require them. So mutations part one in the cards interface. And then over here, um, we'll basically want to grab this stuff. screwed up here. There we go. And so now in our index we should have a new card and a new namespace so that we don't pollute things. Now I'm going to leave this to-do item the way it is there, but I'm going to bring it over here. Oops. Not there. We're going to go Move that above the card. Okay. Now, we're interested in making this thing actually dance a little bit. We'd like to be able to uh, really actually change the thing. So let's go ahead and, and make this a Fulcro dev card. Active to do item one. And we're going to just say to do item. We're going to start off with an empty database. We're going to say inspect data true so we can see things happening. And you see that your item now has nothing interesting. In the last video, I briefly mentioned that we can throw options in here and put initial state in. So let's go ahead and give our, our item a little bit of initial state. You remember for initial state, we have to reload the card so that it it restarts the app. And now you can see, oh, actually I'm disconnected now because I accidentally passed nil to uh, my checkbox. So I do have to put in item complete, false. So it actually gets nailed to uh, a real value. Now you can see complete false is in the database and I'm, I'm good. Okay, to change data, we need to write what are called mutations. And there's a macro, def mutation, uh, for defining these mutations. And they look a little bit like a function. So let's go ahead and say change item label. And mutations take parameters. The parameter has to be a map, so we have to destructure whatever we get in it into it. Um, we'll say text and for the moment we're not going to take an ID and this is this is definitely not the way to write Fulcro apps. This is just like uh, the, um, the baby steps. So the way mutations work is they have sections. So they look a little bit like a function up here and in fact you can do that same trick and tell the IDE uh, if it's turning yellow uh, to treat that as a def in. Uh, you will get yellow here in IntelliJ. Um, and this database is held in an atom. And so this, this entire database is going to be passed your mutation as a state atom. So all you have to do um, to make some effect to the database is to say, all right, swap on state, asos item label with text. There's our first mutation. Change the item label to something new. So now we can go down here to our input and this is a function that gets events and we can say um, 
transact on this component. So transact is the way that we submit transactions to the underlying Fulcro system for processing. And the transactions are data, so we have to quote them. Uh, so we're not actually calling functions here. We're creating a data structure, a vector of things to do that look like function calls, change, item, label. And here we put in the text. Now, of course, we have to unquote um, the right JavaScripty thing to do there. And we need to change our UI editing to true. So let's just start it out that way. Let's just start our initial state as UI editing true so that we have an input label. Okay, we're going to have to reload that to get our initial state to plug in. And now we should see that as we change the value in the field, the state updates in the database. Okay, now we're interested in doing things like, well, maybe the checkbox. Same sort of thing. On chain, on click, this one, we'll want to transact on this some mutation. We can make it up, so toggle complete and we don't really need any parameters for this one because there's only one of them so far. So we'll copy our mutation and change this to an update. And so now if, well, let's see, how about on key down? We check to see if it's an inner key, and if it's an inner key, then we'll transact um, finish editing. And we don't need any specific parameters there. So we've got a couple of things, and then I need to pull in. And we don't have those mutations yet, so toggle complete was that one. Finish editing. And I'm just looking at my, my database here. Finish editing currently takes nothing. And its action is to update, well, is to associate uh, UI editing with false. I'm starting to get a few things here and then okay so if I hit enter there oh it goes into non-edit mode and now you can see the checkbox works with true and false okay I'm gonna leave it just like that for a moment and talk about what you're more interested in we probably don't want to dump a whole bunch of stuff in the same map in a single global state atom and expect anything but chaos. So this in fact is not how you do it. But it gives you the idea of a few of the things here. So as far as, as, far as mutations go. Um, mutations are data. Uh, this allows us later to then send these mutations over the network with the exact same data structure and process them on the server. Transact appears to be um, a, a synchronous call. In fact, it is, you know, there is asynchrony in the browser, so behind the scenes, 
uh, the the local action is happening optimistically uh, as I as I do these transacts. Well, it, it, as as to transact function as this thread for the event handler lets go, then all the transactions run in the order submitted. Um, and you can see that uh, because of our pure rendering. Uh, the component can update and just receive its props and then make itself look the way it wants to look. So this this is probably, I'm just going to repeat myself from the last video, the pure rendering, it's really important to think about this uh, almost as like keyframe animation. If you're told it should look like such and such via these props, that's how it has to look. Uh, the event handling is how you end up submitting your transactions, which change the database. When the database changes, the components uh, re-render if and only if their data has changed, will they go through a React refresh? Uh, so there's a lot of underlying optimizations there to try to minimize the amount of, of UI overhead. Okay, so we've got the basics of mutations, and we've got the basics of throwing this into a, a top-level, uh, full-blown running application where you can see transactions happening and modifying the database. In the next video, we'll start to talk about the data-driven aspects of Fulcro and its database management that keeps the chaos at bay.